Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Pretty Aggressive. My name's Julia and I run Pretty Aggressive Industries. I am the author of Beyond Damage, which is the aggressive recovery from the toxic mother-daughter bond available on amazon.com.ca and all over the other Amazons. I'm also the host of the podcast Matriarch Motivation and you can find me at www.prettyaggressive.net as well as on Instagram and Facebook under pretty aggressive underscore official. Today's topic is awesome. I've been trying to do this video all week, but with holidays and Christmas and New Year's, it's been nuts. So today we're going over the review of Glennon Doyle's Untamed. This book was recommended and loaned to me by a friend of mine who said she read the book and it reminded her of me. And reading it, um, yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate um, in many ways. Definitely the amount of growth that Glennon Doyle does in this book is totally my jam. And her attitude about being untamed is definitely my jam. So I'd like to review this book so that others can get insight and um, know what a powerful read it is. I highly encourage you to read this book. So let's get straight into it. First, this book is full of fierce, quotable wisdoms. Um, I didn't just enjoy this book, I found it provocative, insightful, and applicable to multiple sections as well as multiple layers of life. Glennon Doyle covers a huge range of lessons and lifestyles from being dissatisfied in a heterosexual marriage after being cheated on, to falling in love and marrying a woman, the new partners and parents, um, and covers creating a fluid family after that divorce and bringing in new partners as parents. She speaks to addiction, mental health, anxiety, depression, and both the use and necessity of antidepressants for some people, a particular topic I have previously been a narrow-minded asshole about. The views that she shares about her experience with antidepressants and their use, um, and just kind of the metaphors that she expresses and articulates really helped me develop a lot more empathy and compassion for people's use of antidepressants, whether it's for a short period of time or intended for a lifetime. She also offers her experiences and struggles with her religious communities regarding her partner change and her fan base's response to that change as well, which was very powerful to have insight and perspective into, and also her reactions to both those groups are both vulnerable and courageous. If you haven't looked at Brene Brown's work about how those things absolutely go together, Glennon Doyle has actually fucking nailed it. So she covers the conditioning of women as, as well as both boys and men through multiple avenues in society. In each of our genders, we are molded and prepped through politics, media, culture norms, religion, fear, and pressure. This is our taming. She also dives into the very hard topic of racism in the white culture. She unfolds a very pointed and clear explanation of how white privilege blinds us from our continued unacknowledged participation in ongoing racist habits, despite our liberal opinions about supporting equality. As another blonde white female, it was rather uncomfortable, but very humbling, as it should be. So her, just her communication on that was um, very enlightening and ne so necessary. Glennon's organization of her stories was um, interesting and particular. They're grouped almost in a process, but not linear. They don't have a start to finish timeline of a typical memoir, and rightfully so. We don't actually learn this way and we don't process our lives this way. Her chapters bring you back to certain points in time and lessons, kind of like rolling a ball of yarn. She comes back over the same time and place a few times, but with a different layer or for a new purpose. A big difference that stands out for me from reading Glennon's work versus her other life stories that many, versus other life stories that many have shared, that there's a lesson given. So. An author or a storyteller shows up with an overarching purpose to deliver, whereas Glennon's stories I felt were actually really, were given the opportunity to take away what I wanted or needed for myself. She took a few major sections of her life and allowed me to look at it from different points of view 
to examine a rubrics cube or like a 3D piece of art rather than lead me down a path in one direction. It was kind of one of the, it's, it, I feel like it's the way it, sh it, she wrote it the way it should have been written. And I almost wish that other stories and other memoirs were more often written that way. It could be argued that the true value of other people's stories are not actually what they are meant to teach us, but what we learn from them, which is different if you, if you work that word, those words out in your head. So I actually have a favorite few lessons from this book that I'd like to share. Her first one is her Alicia Keys story, where Alicia states in a broadcasted interview that she's no longer going to wear makeup and won't cover her face, won't cover her dreams, her feelings, nothing. She's not going to cover up anymore. Only to later be on another show and have a co-actor walk past her dressing room and observe her putting on lipstick and then tease her about her previous commitment. And Alicia Keys simply turns around and says, I do what the fuck I want. Beautiful. It's just someone's, it's, it was such a incredible overarching lesson about us making statements about who we want to be and then being fearful of making statements about who we want to be and how we want to change about other people's interpretation of our actions after. And so it actually leads into the second lesson that was one of my favorites of this book. So it's funny that I remember the words and sentences of this next lesson so clearly, yet when I tried to flip through and find the section of the book again where it was, it decided to hide on me or elude me. I actually couldn't find it the second time through another flip through. But Glennon writes about how no woman should ever spend any more of her time or life apologizing, excusing, or justifying choices she believes are right for her, even if they upset other people or make them uncomfortable or scare them. As women, we need to let go of that behavior, that when we make choices or changes that we know are deeply right for us, our kids, our family, our dreams, our values, they should never come with an apology, excuse, or justification for anyone else. As a woman who has personally practiced and hardlined this lesson in my own life, I, need, I needed to take on an extra layer of education in this. I looked at this being everyone else's right to. When other adults in my life make choices that upset me, that make me angry, that frustrate me, or fuck with my shit, I have to accept that this practice applies to them as well. Every other person should be practicing the ability to build relentless conviction in their personal choices that are a part of a hard or difficult process for them in order to elevate their lives and grow as well. Even if someone is willing to offer their why, just because it doesn't make sense to us or suit us or make us happy or comfortable, doesn't mean they owe us anything. If you are going to wield that power, you need to practice the acceptance for others too as well. At the time this message was downloaded and processed in my mind, it was the exact time I really needed it in my life. So thank you, Glennon, and thank you, my friend Leanne, who lent me this book. <laughs> the last powerful lesson was about developing our knowing and, the constantly, and, and this constantly battling against the uncertainty of life. I, it's hard to imagine how can these things happen at the same time to have this deep knowing that she speaks of and yet be accepting and comfortable with just the uncontrollable fates in our environment. To feel a deep sense of knowing or intuition or even safety within ourselves while getting comfortable or being comfortable with the constant uncertainty of life. It took me a while to kind of marinate on this and discuss it with a few other people. It's a lesson or practice that requires almost daily use. It's about knowing and trusting yourself, regardless of the exterior circumstances. It's personal strength and conviction. It's knowing your core values. It's my own advice that I dole out with clients and friends week after week. Who do you want to be in this situation? and fiercely knowing the answer. It's choosing what type of person you wanna be when it comes to partnership, parenting, success, conflict, all of it. Our intuition is actually our subconscious accessing and delivering a bunch of stored information that our consciousness doesn't have access to. 
past memories and experiences and understanding in the other 96% of our brains we're told we don't use, these can suddenly and uncontrollably be jammed into the prefrontal cortex of awareness for use. We have moments where we think, I have no idea why this isn't right or why I should choose this path, but I am certain this is right or this is wrong for me. I know it. I don't know why or how I know it, but I do. The problem is when our 96% doesn't have a lot to work with. When we haven't lived our lives fully or come from dam- or we come from damage or have stunted experiences or haven't tried something enough times to find success and all we have to work with is fuck ups and failure, this is anxiety. This is being crushed by a feeling of not knowing. It's not, it's not about the circumstances, it's about ourselves. Knowing your core, regardless of your environment. The uncertainties of life are not the problem. It's our lack of engagement in life, creating our lack of experience, causing a lack of certainty in ourselves. Developing our knowing takes practice and trying again and again. So those are my three main lessons from Glennon Doyle's Untamed. And obviously I highly recommend it. So if you're interested in that, in those subject matters and having those internal experiences with her work, I highly suggest you check out Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Her stories and lessons are delivered well and are a wealth of perspective. So that's been a review of Glennon Doyle's Untamed. Um, Again, you can contact me at www.prettyaggressive.net. You can find my stuff on Facebook. I do multiple book reviews on things on topics and books and authors that have had an influence on me, changed my life, and I hope this was helpful. So again, I'm Julia. I run Pretty Aggressive Industries. I'm a certified personal trainer, certified nutrition coach, and certified transformation specialist. I teach people how to thrive in this life because simply surviving is bullshit. Put out into the world what you wish to see.